So if this is, we're saying this is a generalization, um, to Abby's point, we're talking transgender and non gender non-conforming students, should this be in a different place in this school policy then? I think this is just the death. This is just a continuation. This is just guidance. This is this is there to. I'm a new teacher coming into the school district. I've never dealt with this before. I want to make sure that I'm doing what the school district wants me to do. And so, and I want to do my job well and do it right. So I read this policy. And names and pronouns would give me some guidance on how to do that. It's not just guidance once you put, put the violation of this, uh, this piece here. Once you have levied a punishment, it is no longer just guidance. But there is no punishment in this paragraph. In this paragraph. In the highlighted paragraph. Yes, in the highlighted paragraph. In the paragraph. first paragraph, you are correct. But you still have the problem, and you still haven't answered my question. Where does the school board derive its power to declare a new right? You folks may not believe it's a big deal. Unfortunately, outside of the school environment, it is a huge deal. Freedom of speech undergoes strict scrutiny once it goes into the legal area. And this will get knocked down. And I'll tell you, as a member of the budget committee, I don't want to have to see you raise your expense line item for legal issues. That's why I keep bringing this up. Well, I and if you continue down this road, you're going to get higher legal issues. I'm going to say this. I don't appreciate, and neither does any other member of the board, I'm sure, although I'm going to speak for myself as a member of the board. I hope you do. I don't appreciate coming to meetings and getting threatened with lawsuits. Well, you know something? So, let's continue on. No, I wish to address that because no, the law... No, this is a policy meeting, Skip. We're going to address the policies. But you have to address the rule of law as well. And RSA 91A says certain things and has actionable items associated with it. All I've ever asked for, and if you want to shut me up, is answer the question. It's rather simple, but you, the school board has said that it is not going to answer the question. I'm just pointing out the obvious. I'm not threatening a lawsuit. I'm saying it will happen because you refuse to follow the rule of law. How is that a model for both the students and the staff to say we can make up laws that we want to and ignore other laws that we don't like? That's what it comes, that comes down to. So I think, do we have another word besides right? Well, I was trying to find another word here. Um, but for just, you know, is it, I'm sorry, Abby, is it? Yeah. So this, what I, you know, said that the same thing would be for um, if a teacher consistently called somebody, it doesn't have to be a gender issue. We could consistently call somebody by name that did not, they did not want to be called. Uh, we would have the same kind of issue with that adult as we would with Anthony as a student. Right, it would be the same, the same thing. Um, you know, I am, we don't even need to have yeah. the second paragraph yeah. if you don't want the second paragraph. Let's just, just take that out. Some. Safe to say, I'm not a, I'm not an attorney, I'm a judge. Um, but the word right, if I mean, it is common courtesy. We ask. Well, according to Google Dictionary, Peter Wright says that which is morally correct, just, or honorable. So, um, What if we, instead of saying the right should be, we should The cast and crew of School of, of Rock can pick up their shirts. See Scott Pennington. Thank you. Um, a student who has, a student 
under this policy should be addressed instead of right should be addressed by a name or pronoun that corresponds to the student's gender identity that is consistently asserted in school. I just, I just don't want any, and I, I know I can speak for Anthony, you know, I just don't want any kid, um, transgender or not, being harassed and being called something they don't want to be called. That's, what, that's, the, right. that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, um, and whatever we need in place, whether it's here or harassment issue, you know, that's the bottom line for us. This is, you know, so maybe we say should be. Okay, so a student under this policy should be addressed. Can't you just re refer to your bullying and harassment policy? In this policy as well, we can't, absolutely. I actually think that would be a, a better move to do that because most of what you're trying to accomplish is already in those two policies. Rather than getting into the coerced speech, now, I'm still concerned from a civil rights standpoint that the harassment can lead to coerced speech, but that's that will be for another day. All right, so, so I'm gonna take out that second paragraph. Well the just the example is what we're looking yes. at or are we looking at the leading the entire paragraph? Because to, to Peter's point, if a student or a teacher is still intentionally and persistently disrespecting by calling somebody something that they don't want to call. So leave that last sentence in. Or is that covered under the harassment policy? Maybe we say refer to. Or under J, where it talks about discrimination and harassment, we could always put referring to policy AC, which is our non discrimination policy. And then you look up the harassment and bullying policies as well. Put them in there in that section. Isn't that JBAA? Because we do have a reference to the pol mm -hmm. a policy. Okay. Yeah. So this would be taken out all together. Yeah. Because I can have a conversation, and I do all the time because I'm terrible at names. With people who never use their name, and that's you know it's it's possible to do and without being disrespectful. No, it's not. I do too. Never heard it. Tell me your phone number. I'll remember the rest of my life, but I can't remember you know, uh, really ten minutes later. So how would section C now read? What I've got is a student under this policy should be addressed by a name or pronoun that corresponds to the student's gender identity that is consistently asserted at school. And that second paragraph completely is gone. Deleted. Another section I added just to offer some language that is from the um, Oyster River policy is uh, section E on the restroom accessibility.
Well, we just wanted to make sure that there was a safe company. More safe than any chaos. And that there was something for everybody. Okay. And I think that covers Again, I'm just off offering alternatives. I don't know if you want to keep what was in the LOD or add or merge the two or pieces of both. Okay.